Welcome back to High Impact Growth. I'm Amy Vaccaro, a co-host of this podcast, and today we are kicking off a series of episodes digging into Demagi's five-year strategy for high impact growth. So if you're following Demagi really closely, you may have noticed that we released our five-year strategy on the Demagi blog early May of 2022. The blog links to a 15-page strategy document that is the result of a lot of work from Demagi leadership and across Demagi's divisions, looking at where we want to go. It's an extensive document, and it reflects many hard-learned lessons from the past 20 years. But personally, I learn best through stories and spoken content, so I wanted to unpack these strategies with some of the key figures from across Demagi. First, here's a quick snapshot of Demagi's three strategic priorities for the next five years. One, improve jobs to improve outcomes. Two, sustain exponential growth. And three, exceed market expectations. Today, we're going to start in the middle with strategic priority two, sustain exponential growth. And in particular, we're going to understand an ethos that I think sets us apart from many of the technology players in global development, which is that we prioritize platforms over projects. In this episode, you'll hear us reference ComCare, Demagi's flagship offering. It's a customizable digital platform for frontline work anywhere in the world. We offer ComCare on a software as a service model to nonprofits and governments. And the way that we've approached building ComCare really embodies this focus on platforms over projects. I'll also mention that Demagi has a sizable and incredibly talented professional services team called our Solutions Delivery Team, which will implement ComCare, as well as other digital platforms, for partners on specific projects all over the world. You'll hear these projects referenced as well in this episode. So I started the exploration of this strategy with Jonathan Jackson. What does exponential growth mean to you? And when I hear exponential growth, I think of revenue, and that's actually not what we mean here. So share a bit about your thinking in in these words. Yeah. So I think if we look at all the success we've had over the last 20 years, and we are the largest frontline worker platform, we're just over 100,000 active users in 2021. And while we're incredibly proud of that, we have 10 million frontline workers out there that we're trying to support. And so we have a long way to go. And we're up for making this a focus for the next 20 years, but linear growth just isn't going to get us there. And so when we came up with this, it was really a focus on thinking about what is going to work to have gotten us here for the last 20 years was great, but we need to potentially be thinking about new pathways to get us there tomorrow that's going to maintain that exponential growth rate. And as you said, that's exponential impact, not exponential revenue is what we're looking for. And the reason why it's so important to make sure we're still on that path is, again, we're trying to reach a lot of users, improve their jobs and improve the outcomes. And we're only going to do that if we think we have models and pathways to growing exponentially, um, because I just don't think there's um, a path to get there growing linearly. How are you thinking about achieving exponential growth, both on the side of kind of SaaS users of ComCare, but also thinking about some of these major projects that we're involved in implementing, how do we ensure those are sustainable long-term? Yeah, we spend a lot of time thinking about our business model and sustainability for Demagi, but increasingly also at the project level. In order to achieve that exponential growth, we need it to be the case that we're setting our partners and projects up for success without needing Demagi staff or even wanting Demagi staff, because we're not planning to grow our headcount exponentially. We're 250 people now and we will continue to grow into the future years but we're not expecting or or projecting to grow exponentially so each hour we spend supporting our projects and clients needs to turn into eventually zero for that particular project so they can scale and grow the impact on their own both in terms of user count and in terms of making that solution more impactful over time i think lots of projects have various states sometimes we do stay engaged in the project indefinitely But other times they're either starting on their own without us in a SaaS environment or they're building with us, but then taking over the solution. And I think those are both great outcomes and that's, what's going to allow us to grow exponentially. And that's also why we're growing our ecosystem quite heavily in terms of partners who can implement ComCare that are not just our organization to continue that growth to the best extent that we can. 
Is there a, a project or a partner that you could speak to that's been able to either we worked with them really closely early on and now they're sort of scaling on their own or where we're seeing this this work? Because I know this is like the, the crux of it, right? It's it's easy for us to work with a partner, scale something together, but then once we walk away, seeing that it continues to grow is really essential. Yeah, and I think it's it's interesting. It's not often this question is posed as in, you know, does the team have the skill or the resources and things? And that we've gotten to work with amazingly talented people. So like, that's not the issue. It's a question of whether the project is going to still be prioritized and whether they're going to still be wanting to invest the effort into the project and whether that project is going to grow and bring more users on or have more impact. Again, the issue with us having a fixed headcount, well, the government also has a fixed headcount and so do our implementing partners and so does public health departments in the U.S. And so they also need to go from 1,000 users to 10,000 users without needing more than two people because all of those organizations are also not trying to grow their headcount exponentially. And so I think for a lot of those projects, we um, try to do as good of a job as we can setting up, you know, how are you going to sustain that project? How are you going to take advantage of the fact that Comcare is a low-code application platform that you can continue to improve and modify over time? And it's a, it can be a challenge because that requires capacity building on our platform. And that is often trading off with speed of the project. So a lot of our projects that we start on, you know, there's a lot of excitement and we want to get moving as fast as we can, and that's great. But we also try to concurrently make sure we're aligning interest with the partner, understanding when do they want to build capacity on what time frame, And we have a whole delivery methodology that helps support this process. So we typically are building hand in hand with the client and the partner and then um, training them to be able to take over the solution at the rate they want. Some partners don't want us to, to exit and do want us to stay indefinitely, but a lot of partners do want to be trained up um, and understand how to maintain and, and manage the solution on their own. One of the things that I've really admired about Demagi and Comcare is that Comcare came from project funding, but building a platform through all that project funding. So it's, it's cool to see this articulated explicitly in this strategy. What do you see as key for this strategy in the next five years? I think the biggest key is we have to get people bought in that they want to make this trade. And so one of the most difficult things early on when we were building Comcare as an open source platform was convincing each individual project that it wasn't their interest to fund their pet feature into the open source code base because they were getting the benefit of everybody else who had agreed to that before them. And it's not just about software sharing, but open sourcing content or open sourcing training materials or best practices or data use or supervision approaches. And convincing our partners that by contributing these assets and supporting with their knowledge base that they're contributing into the community, they're in fact getting much more out as well. And I think that's how you create that really positive community aspect of how you move everybody together. And I think that's what we have to keep making the case for and keep demonstrating um, that value. Otherwise, why would you listen to our argument, right, that you should want to prioritize platforms, not just software platforms, but all of these different delivery platforms? over the specific interests of any given project. And we also need to get better at articulating, this isn't just true of Demagi. This is also something health systems need to do in general, is prioritize health system delivery platforms over specific projects. So if we think about a frontline workforce as a platform for delivery, you may be deploying an HIV intervention or TB intervention or maternal and child health intervention through that frontline workforce, but they need to be thought of as a platform and optimized as a delivery platform of these health system interventions. And so it doesn't just apply to how we want to think about it. We also think this is how health systems should be thinking about their problems as well. This is a really important point, and I want to take a moment to underscore it. As a side note, I'm relatively new to global health and development, so I'm learning as I go here. And from what I'm learning, it's really common for funders to fund a specific program associated with one disease vertical, like HIV, for example. And if an HIV program is funded, health workers are often hired for that individual project or campaign, rather than investing in them as a network of frontline health professionals that can outlive every project and can be tapped into for any new intervention. Imagine the potential of a health workforce that's supported at the quote unquote platform level so that they can support all the various programs. You'll hear a lot more from us about supporting health workers as it ties into our first strategic priority, improve jobs to improve outcomes. In any case, this platform approach is similar to how we think about ComCare. We don't want to build a feature into ComCare that's particular to one and only one project. We want to build functionality 
that goes into our open source code base and can support every single frontline worker using ComCare across many, many projects and programs. Okay, so that was a pretty good intro, but I was still really craving to know a bit more about what does this actually look like in practice. So I brought in Danny Roberts, who is Demagi's Director of Engineering for our Software as a Service team. So before, Danny, we jump into a bunch of questions about our strategies, I want to hear a little bit about your story. So you joined Demagi 11 years ago, which is amazing. What made you join? When I was first looking for a job out of college, I didn't really know what I was looking for exactly, but I had some vague ideas. You know, I wanted it to be something meaningful. I didn't really know what one could do in the world with an engineering degree in computer science. And what I was seeing was my peers were kind of going into finance and consulting were like by far the, the two big things, right? And then there was sort of big tech, you know, people talking about, oh, who got an internship at Google or Facebook or something like that. And I, I, I kind of looked at those things and they're, they're great jobs. Uh, companies doing uh, kind of really interesting technical things, but it wasn't really speaking to me as a, as a career, right? I was kind of floating, right? I, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And I was looking at various, various emails, you know, listservs of kind of job, job postings people are sending out. And I got one that I, I think was from probably John wrote about Demangi, and it was like half a paragraph long. It was super short, but it was just sort of basically like come code with us and uh, do great things in the world. And I was like, okay, I'll try this out. So yeah, showed up for a few interviews. It was a really small team at the time, maybe 10 people or something. And I talked to a few of the engineers, got through the interviews, got the offer. And I didn't really think twice. I was just like, okay, this sounds way better than anything else I've heard. So uh, let's, let's jump into this maybe for a year or two, see how it goes. That's awesome. And what's kept you here 11 years later? Well, yeah, I mean, at no point did we continue to be the company that we were the year before or a couple of years before, right? So, you know, when I joined, it was already a time of rapid change, right? We are sort of in this like inflection point between being a, a like a software consultancy where we did sort of project by project to being a product company, just sort of in the infancy of that. The, the name Comcare existed, the mobile side of that had already been built out to some extent. There was a long way to go. It was sort of at the stage of being like, oh, we've done a few things, a few different projects that had some things in common, and we've consolidated some of that code so it's reusable. And the journey was to get from there to a product that somebody could recognize and, and go online and use. And, and that was a long journey. And so every year was really quite different. Every time I, I think, oh, maybe I'm kind of reaching the limit of, of what I want to do here. There's just, there's a new challenge and, and it sort of feels like we're in a different era. I love that story, Danny. Thank you. So as you know, today we're talking about our exponential growth strategy. And one of the considerations, which is that we will prioritize platforms over projects. What does this mean to you? in your role as director of engineering? Yeah, so like at a really high level, when somebody uses Comcare and their kind of program makes it into the news, let's say it's a really big deal, makes it into the, the local paper for the country or, or international news or something like that. Often the word Comcare or Demagi or whatever doesn't even show up in the article, right? So we're not the main story for any of the projects that we work on. You know, whether it's a small enough that you might call it a project or, or like large enough that you might call it a, a national scale program or something like that. And that by itself, the, the program administration and the project administration is an enormous amount of work, a lot of which has nothing to do with tech. And even the parts that do have to do with tech, they're really very detailed about like what questions are going to be asked in this part of the procedure, right? And the team that that I work on is really quite removed from that. What, what we're doing is saying, we want every project team 
that is trying to do something new and creative or take an existing approach and scale it up massively. We want them to have the best possible tools to do that. So an analogy I like to think of is back when everyone was using paper forms, you never really expected when you're starting a new project to test out an intervention, you wouldn't expect that organization to also run its own paper mill. They would buy paper and print out the, the forms on them. Maybe they wouldn't even come up with the interventions. Maybe they're CDC or, or a governmental body that's coming up with what the procedure should be. And what they're doing is really focusing on the implementation. And so now that paper isn't the thing that people need, but rather sort of tools that emulate in a, in a much better way, what we used to do with paper, like we want to be that, that provider that provides the blank canvas that people can write on and as stable as highly available as paper is, which is, it's always there. Yeah. I remember we would email everybody in the company with what we learned interacting with the users and, and Danny wrote this email that was saying, Hey everybody, you know, this is a super cool project, but the organization couldn't have done this without me. And then he kind of bolds it and repeats a sentence. He's like, the organization couldn't have done this without me. That's terrible. You know, we need to be able to provide a better experience, better tools. And this was very early on in Comcare, you know, when we were really bootstrapping the platform, but Danny always kind of brought that ethos to the table of like the way we're going to get huge impact here is really unlocking the full potential of what digital can do, what the applications can do to our clients and customers. And I think that's something that we're really shooting for when we talk about exponential growth and just making sure each individual project can do what it needs to do because we're really focused on making a highly scalable, highly configurable experience for them. So Danny or John, I'm curious, is there an example that comes to mind of how this has played out? Like any specific story of when we've really prioritized that platform mentality? Well, I'll give an experience when we didn't, and then Danny can, can talk about how we do it. I think a lot of the times we hear a requirement from a customer, a new report or a new way the mobile app could be used. And in our heads, we're like, oh, that's kind of general. Everybody should want that. Let's go in and build that generically. And then you get into the details and timelines get shorter and, you know, more urgent. And so by the time we're done, we build it just for that one project. And we're happy and excited to do that because that's really where the impact happens, as Danny mentioned, like at the front lines, but it, um, isn't scalable. And so then we try to go back and make that more generic and retrofit it into something that can be used by way more customers. And our engineering, um, division has been exceptionally good at this over the years, but as we continue to grow and as Danny mentioned, we're not the same company, you know, that we were last year. We've really changed our discipline over time and thinking about the best way to balance great ideas coming up from what our customers are trying to do with the platform and how to make sure that scales across now hundreds of thousands of users and, you know, tens of millions of form submissions. And our thinking has really evolved on this, um, since the early days. Yeah. And, and that's exactly right. And that we often think of working on a project as sort of a, a liability, something we don't want to be doing because it takes a lot of time and resources away from working on the thing that thousands of customers could use, but the flip side is true too, right? So all of our, our best features and kind of most innovative changes to Comcare over the last 10 years have all come from working on individual projects and realizing that even if we stretched the existing functionality of the platform to its limit, it just wasn't going to be able to do it. And so in each of those cases, we, we had all of these trade-offs. Do we just implement it for this one project? Or do we take a longer view and, and do maybe 10 times as much work and get this to something that now a hundred different people could kind of do their own thing with and come up with solutions that they can build on top of this, that we would never even dream of. And, and that's always sort of the, the, the thing that we have in the back of our minds when we're, we're saying, you know what, like right now, the most important thing is that we somehow stretch the platform's capabilities to meet the immediate requirements. But can we do that where we are actually stretching the platform and not just building a stopgap between what the platform can do and, and what we need? What does it feel like as an engineer to, to be thinking in this way? Yeah. So, uh, you know, over this, the years, this has changed a lot. There used to be things that we would just accept we're going to do on a project by project basis. Like a, a really persistent example of that was reporting. We expected that 
you know, we're going to try to make everything as generic as possible in terms of the app building and all of that. But at the end of the day, people wanted to see the data and our, our data reporting tools just weren't there. And so our engineers and subcontractors and our project management time, a lot of it went into writing custom reports that kind of showed up in our product for every individual customer who wanted it. And we didn't really have a great answer for that for a long time. We'd say, well, we don't, we don't want to do this, but people need it. So if we can't push back on it and say, oh, why don't you just export your data and use Excel to create graphs? If none of those things work, then we just had to fall, fall back on, okay, in order to get this project, we're going to spend a bunch of time writing custom reports for you. And, and a number of things over the last five years have really changed that specific one. Our internal reporting tools and our uh, data extraction tools and that whole ecosystem has, has gotten a lot more mature since then to the point where I, I can't remember a single example in the last or five years, let's say, where we were backed into a corner of ha having to write custom refor reports for people. So, so that's like a really clear example of a long cycle we were in where we couldn't get out of it, where finally we, we did take that engineering time to invest in, and it has really paid off. That's really cool, Danny. And I think we're, we're essentially learning from our customers from specific project needs, applying that to scale them to all of our customers. And it's interesting because this is how many product companies work, but it's very unusual for the field that we're in, right? Which is international development, where we're getting contracted for the specific projects. I think it's just been this incredible discipline that Demagi has had to push ourselves to think like a product company, even though we're getting paid like a tech vendor on a contract basis. Yeah. And I'd say this is part of why we are so proud of our open source approach is I think one of the unique things we bring to the market and one of the things that's critical to achieving exponential growth is the recognition that most of the funding in this industry is project-based and we don't think it's likely to be changeable. And so we've designed our approach to accept that reality and then create global goods, even with that being true. And I think that's something that's amazing about how our engineering team thinks about the world and, and being able to take these project by project funding or features and create this amazing platform that creates this value. And then we've been fortunate that as the business has grown, we've been able to, under Danny's leadership and others, um, really turn some elements of that global good into full cost centers that we just, you know, can afford to pay for indefinitely. And that's been a step change in the productivity and the mindset that we can bring to the table in terms of further unlocking that exponential growth with our tech investments. What are some of the top benefits you see of this approach? And maybe also, are there any challenges that you see? Yeah. I mean, so I think for benefits, it really, it depends on who you're talking to. There are benefits for Demagi and there are benefits for our customers. The benefits for our customers, I think unequivocally, I would say it's, it's at least 10 times cheaper than trying to get the same quality from building on top of other existing tools that aren't, aren't specialized for this. And for us, it it's, yeah, cause I mean, being able to have that reach where we know that we've built something that's so generally useful that people can build things on top of it that we may never have even thought of. Yeah, and I'd say one of the drawbacks that Danny alluded to is every individual project feature request that comes up is valid. You know, so they, they, they're asking for it because they really want it, whether that's a custom report or a custom feature. And part of who we are as a company is really wanting to meet that need because presumably we, we did the project with them in the first place because we were optimistic that their intervention was going to have a big impact. And so obviously this is the classic trade-off between custom versus product, but it is still um, unfortunate sometimes when we're like, yeah, that is a really great idea and we can't help you do it in the platform. But one of the really cool things that we've spent a lot of time on over the years is making sure you can get data in and out of our system. So even if ComCare doesn't do it, maybe another piece of software can. And so you can still solve your problem even if we're not necessarily the entire solution for a given use case. Yeah, I, I want to extend that a bit. That, that's been a huge focus in the last few years, I would say, is going from that you know, anything custom has to be built into the tool as sort of separate custom code in the same code base to taking it one step further to say, our platform allows you to integrate with so many different things that it's up to you to look at our ecosystem and figure out how to solve your problems by building your own tools on top of ComCare rather than asking us to build tool, new custom tools into ComCare. 
and we're not the only developers in the world, right? There are, there are great teams of um, developers and, and some programs have those sort of resources to do their own in-house development. And sometimes that's the appropriate solution to bridge a gap between a super powerful generic solution and the exact thing that your project needs. I think that really speaks to the, the benefits of building a platform that other people can build onto, right? And really creating more of an ecosystem than just like everyone depends on Comcare to build what they need. I also wanted to say we have taken over the years a very flexible approach. Like every customer that comes to us is a, is a bit different and they may need a lot of help using our software or they may need almost none. So a team that has more technical expertise or, or wants to own that content creation part of the process, they can do so by signing up with us in a, in a fairly low touch way through sort of a sales process. And then on the other extreme, we will go in with large organizations or even small organizations on a contract bid and be there with them every step of the way, building out the final sort of product that they are looking for. And those are kind of two really different ways to engage with customers. And they're both really appropriate for the right customer. And if we had decided, you know, we're only ever going to do one or the other, we would have lost a lot of that, that chance to build out the tools for one set of customers that also improves the way they work for the, for the other set. And I, I think that flexible approach to how closely do we want to work with the partner on the content creation has been also really key to our platform's development. All right. Thank you to John and Danny for a fantastic episode. Before we close, I wanted to share some of my key takeaways from this episode. So Demagi is really here to grow exponentially. And when we talk about growth, we're not talking about revenue, we're talking about impact and the number of users of Comcare and our offerings. We're currently at over 100,000 active users, but there are 10 million frontline workers who could benefit from our products. And in the next five years, we're aiming to get to 500,000. Our platform mentality is key to helping us get there. It means that we consider adding features and functionality to our offerings that will help every single user over custom functionality for one specific project. It's a trade-off that can be challenging to message with partners who care deeply about the one project. But the benefit is that every partner we work with benefits from every single partner that has ever come before them. And this mindset applies to global health at large as well. We're taking a platform approach to health system strengthening will allow scarce resources to go further than investing in programs for one specific vertical. In an environment where funds are limited, like global public health, we have to think in this way. And this is at the heart of how Demagi has been able to build a robust global good like Comcare with project-based funding. And it's how we're able to offer solutions at a fraction of the cost. So in the next couple episodes, you're going to hear from a few other Demagiers about other aspects of exponential growth. You'll hear from our chief connector, Rowena Luke, about growing the ecosystem, as well as our senior director of product, Dave Moray, about improvements to Comcare that allow us to scale. Stay tuned and thanks so much for joining.